All right, ready to start this video. I've actually filmed here like majority of the time before they kicked me out and I snuck my way back in. Sneaking your way back in isn't really sneaking when you got shit like this, but whatever. Anyway, so yeah, so today, uh, if you guys are looking for a really action-packed burnout dino pool video, by now you guys should have got one, but hey, that's not what this video is going to be about. For those of you who have not checked out my channel, I have like tons of other videos uh, making this from stock to how it is now, and I'll kind of walk over and give you guys a little bit, um, uh, I don't know, what, quick walk around in my car. Because believe it or not, a lot of people ask me so many questions about all the videos that I made. I'm going to answer most of those questions now. So you will know this is a f32 it is a bmw 435 2014 and first and foremost i'll make this um clear right now i'm not trying to make it an m4 his car is not trying to be as fast as an m4 it's nice looking as an m4 or whatever the hell you guys think this is not the goal of this is not to be an M4. Right about now, I'm approaching my what, like 5,000 subscribers, maybe in the next month or so. So, like I said, I want to say thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I, I'm extremely, extremely proud of this car. Once again, I said, this is not my dream car by any means. However, this is something that I could afford. I took like a blank canvas and made it my own. I think that's just like a little bit more enjoyable than owning my dream car because I took something that was so normal to me, so sedated to blend it in, and I turned it into a freaking monster. I turned it into something that's like insane, and I, I, I don't know, I just let my imagination run wild with everything. I didn't think about certain things about like logistics wise or this, that, and the third. Trust me, this car has been the first of so many. I've never modified a car so heavily like this mother Trust me, I've been an OEM plus guy. Biggest thing I did with wheels, uh, I'm talking about 650 wheels on the BMW. I upgraded my ultimate wheels to the V6 wheels. I just did little sort of upgrades. I ran a JB plus on the five series, just like two pounds of boost extra. Like yo, I just did like little things, little things like that. And I kind of wanted to work my way up to my Porsche 911, but I figured, I get this Porsche 911 and I modified the hell of it and realized that half the stuff I did to it, I don't like. So I figured, let me just go ahead and get something like this and, I mean, I can't afford a Porsche 911 right now, let's be honest, but let me get something like this and I could go ahead and do whatever I want to it. Now this was an F80 M3 M4, uh, given the price differences, half the stuff I wouldn't be able to do on this anyway, but uh, this is very affordable for me. It was $26,000 when I picked it up. and. Allow me some room to have some fun. That's kind of where this car lies. I mean, it has a very nice place in my heart. I never see myself keeping it. I always say after about two years, I'm gonna go ahead and sell it, get rid of it. But I've done so much to the car. Like I would never do all of this car ever again, unless it's like an E36. Thing right here, this is this is an example of, this is an example of me. Everything on it, I literally picked and said, I want this. And it might not seem like that much to you guys, but when you can do this and you can take your ideas and put it on reality, I guess, put it on, not paper, because it ain't paper, but take your ideas and, and put it out into the world, and then so many of you guys like it and appreciate it and respect it, I love that, I love that. Because, you know, we watch YouTube a lot. I watch YouTube myself, and I see different builds and different things, and I go, damn, that'd be nice if that was on my car. This would be nice. And then you kind of forget about it. Life gets in the way, whatever the case may be. But it's like, yo, it's here, it's done, you know? When people see the car, they ask so many questions. You know, did it come like that, which, I guess, but um, that is actually the number one question I get. But did it come like that? Who did it? Is it rap? Is it this? And trying to explain somebody the concept of Autoflex is a little bit difficult. Trying to explain to somebody the Big Boost Turbo Kit is a little difficult. A lot of people, I don't know, they think once you have it on or once they see the video that it's completely done and they go, oh yeah, they see it on the highway, like, yo, run, like, yo, bro. I got like 30 drivetrain malfunction error type things right now. The goddamn wheel probably about to fall off. This stuff takes 
a lot of time. So I don't want to do all these goddamn pulls with you guys on the highway because sometimes my car is just slow. It's just really slow. I know I got a big boost, but it's slow. Right now it ain't that slow, but it's still got a manifold. Moral of the story is these things take time and I'm happy. I love it that you guys watch these damn videos because they are a little painstaking to make sometimes. It does become very time consuming. And when things break, I get upset. I'm uh, not that upset really, but I don't know. See, the thing is, I don't really know how to translate how kind of excited I am uh, that you guys actually watch these videos. I really don't know how to explain that from a, I don't know, level of, you guys, I'm not gonna jump on the camera and go, oh guys, I'm so excited. Cause I don't know, that's really not me sometimes. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm just extremely happy that I've got the opportunity to build something like this. Sometimes you just gotta look at it, you know? Update time. So, many of you guys don't know, I got this side of the car redone by Pro Dipper. Uh, we're not exactly sure what happened. It could be anything like a salt truck or a bunch of things. But I had a little couple of nicks in the door. So he went ahead and sprayed over it and did it. You can't tell. The shit actually looks like two different colors a little bit. He said what happens is it has to sit in the sun. I don't know, get a little dirty. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully that is the case. I have to wait for it to cure before I can ceramic coat everything. Hopefully everything pans out to be the same color because it really bugs me. If it's not, then uh, we'll have to do something about that. You guys can see I also did the calipers. Now, I've been getting feedback from you guys. Some people, uh, what's that guy, Manolo from Empire Boy, he told me that he had it, and it didn't work out that well. I don't know how it would hold up to be 100% honest with you, but I got them done. They're on the car, they are matching. That is Autoplex, so I will document that later on, let you guys know if it's cracking, chipping, peeling, when I get the brakes changed, get the rotors changed, how it held up. And, you know, we'll go from there. Let's go over to the trunk. And finally got in the exhaust manifold gasket from Juan. Boy, you gotta really hit this guy up in order to get some goddamn parts. Him and his father, I don't know, y'all be forgetting, y'all busy, but finally got exhaust manifold gasket from Juan. This is the only gasket that I would need. I uh, spoke to uh, Andre, he got he had the M55, the, three, the 335 big boost kit. Uh, once I get 30 online, uh, he let me know that there's really no other gaskets besides this one. Uh, the kit is made, I guess, is made to mount up flush. We gotta take the exhaust manifold back off, change the gasket, put it back on, install the copper nuts in a proper order, and bolt it back up. Then I get the cartoon. So waiting on Geo from European Auto from that. Uh, next thing, I gotta get brakes. The brake light is on, if you guys have not seen. Rears are good, the front seat replacing. I'm gonna do like stainless steel lines and things of that nature. Uh, just right now, I'm focused on getting the things that are really broken. Well, the brakes are bad. So I'm getting things that are really broken, like the manifold and everything uh, situated, get on the dyno, then I'll mess with the brakes. Probably if I kill myself, right? I'm gonna give you guys a broad overview. I'm not gonna go by piece by piece. I'm gonna give you guys what I remember. So I'm gonna go from first what you can see to what you can't see. Now, first off, obviously, the car is green, all right? This is radioactive uh, autoflex. We'll get into a little bit about that other stuff in a minute. But yeah, you like it? Is the GTS hood. I uh, was never planning on getting it, but shop screwed up my old hood. Figured it's a perfect opportunity for them to pay for this GTS hood right here. I went ahead and tinted the headlights with Laminex. This is the tint shade. I like it because people don't actually know that there's tint on there. I can still see at night. It actually makes the car look a lot more sharp and decent. Um, anyway, uh, moving over right next to it, connected, changed the grills, got those for my birthday. Um, I'll kind of try to put all the videos of where I installed these things. But yeah, got the blacked out kidney grills. That's like the number one mod that everybody goes for because one, who wants silver? And two, it just, it makes the car look nice, especially if you have M Sport package. So next on the list is these voice starters. Now I know this one is banged up right here. Don't remind me. I've been saying I was gonna get it fixed since I banged it up. Probably been bent for like a year now. I've been tossing the idea of getting it fixed versus getting the wheels. I can't find any new wheels I like besides this. So these are my voice Steiner. They are dirty as hell too, you see them? These are my voice Steiner VFF 108 wheels uh, wrapped 
with a Firehawk Indy 500 tire. 235.35 on these H&R Lauren Springs with the uh, couple of the Bilstein V6 shocks. And this is kind of the setup that you would get. Now, uh, you'll notice this has a little bit more camber than normal because of the fact that I put the F80, F82 control arms and the F80, F82 tension arms to kind of push it the wheel back a little bit so I will stop scraping in front of the car. And then, like I said, I kept the car mostly stock to be honest with you. Uh, me and Cal went ahead and wrapped the roof black. Uh, that is actually still roof wrapped. Despite the risk being auto flex, uh, you'll notice I picked up these side skirts on eBay. Now, disclaimer, this is not really a side skirt at all, I don't think. It's like a piece of plastic that's been molded. It's been cut like a little uh, rectangle. I don't really recommend it. Uh, it doesn't flow with any of your body. It doesn't really add any crazy characteristics. It just, I've grown to like it over the time. But I picked it up for about 150 bucks on eBay. And uh, I mean, like I said, I've grown to like it. I would recommend getting an actual side skirt, but shout out to the guy that made it because, well, I'm still rocking it, right? I mean, sheesh, it ain't much done to the exterior of the car. You know what I mean? The back's obviously same setup, H&R Super Sport Springs, Bilstein B6 uh, shocks. We're in the 275, 35, um, 19 on the back with my voice trying to wheel. The back looks chunky as fuck. And I've noticed now when people drive behind me, my car looks perked up a lot. Like it looks like it's aiming at the ground. I didn't realize that. It, that's because this tire is a lot uh, more meatier than the front. So the front, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't know if you noticed that my car does like this kneel down thing down the street. It looks weird, but then you grow to like it, you know? Uh, but yeah, coming to the back, got the rear side spats on there. Same thing as the front. Looks like a guy just cut it from a template. You know, it works. Here. How do you guys spend most of your time back here looking at the taillights anyway? So you probably know what I got, but just in case you don't, eBay carbon fiber uh, trunk lift. This is actually one of the old, only carbon fiber pieces I have on the car. Uh, it came out really nice. It's only about 120 bucks and it lasted this long. I've done no maintenance to it. I could tell it's starting to burn a little bit, but whatever. Diffuser, eBay regular ass diffuser. I had goals to paint it the body color, but a lot of you guys shot me down with that idea. And I mean, I understand that now. I, I see why, because it looks nice how it is. Pretty much it. That's pretty much literally all the exterior things that I did to my car. So if you guys don't know by now, all I really pretty much did exterior wise, has been like little cheap eBay bids and things of that nature. Uh, throughout the build process of this car, I realized, I realized the kind of person I am and what I like to do to my cars. I do like my cars to look extremely nice, but I'm not a fan of all of the carbon fiber bits and things of that nature. Uh, a lot of the reason being is because, well, I don't know, they break, especially in the bottom. If I put a nice, oh, wow, somebody back into my car. You see that shit? Oh, well, whatever. The things you don't put the camera on that, you shot everybody. My flaws, no, anyway. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, yeah, I'm not really the type, I realize that. I really like more gold and show. I like looking at the nice car stance, air it out and things of that nature, but for me personally, I do want it to look nice, hence why I painted it green, a nice attention grabber. The car looks pretty much, I mean, stock-ish. Somewhat, you know? But, um, but yeah, there's no really fancy tricks, air it out, $700 carbon front lips, whatever. Because in all reality, somebody could just walk by and rip that guy uh, carbon fiber trunk lip off. I'm only out of $120. I'll still be pissed, but I'm only out of $120. I don't want to put something that's like $500 on the back and somebody come by and then they just came up on the lip. You know, so call me paranoid, call me cheap, just trying to save a dollar. But at the end of the day, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of what I like it. I like my car, how it looks now. A lot of people tell me it looks sick. Thank you. Because all I really did was uh, buy eBay parts and paint the thing. So, uh, talk to you guys a little bit about the suspension. Everything else is pretty much stock besides, like I said, it's lowered. Uh, the struts that it's on, the F80 control arms, uh, adds a little bit of camber to it. Like you'll see here, uh, currently right now, first thing that probably pops to your mind is this carbon fiber. Oh my God, I gotta clean this thing. You can see right here, I got my carbon fiber, Turner Motorsports intake, which second, obviously, following down the path, I had a big boost. Uh, turbo in here. It's a Master Power 65-64 turbo 
uh, bolted onto a big boost kit. The VRSF front mount and a cooler, all the piping with the big boost kit is, um, I mean, there. It was supplied up until the charge pipe. That's a VRSF charge pipe, still have from stock. Finally got that sucker not to leak boost, but yeah. Change spark plugs, I changed coil packs. Those are the uh, NGK 97506 that are two steps colder uh, than original. To be completely honest with you, if you guys are just running stage two and just want to run full bolt ons and that's it, you probably could get away with the Bosch plugs. But what I've noticed about these NGKs is they idle a little bit more finicky than the Bosch ones. You could say whatever you want to say, but that's just my observation. Also have them gapped. I did not have them gapped. That was something that I learned later on. You need them gapped. I think 0 0.020. But once again, check out these videos, right? After this turbo, I mean, after the turbo, you need fuel. So this right here, what you're seeing is the spool high pressure fuel pump. Uh, line right there because down below and if you can see the red I have a spool uh, high pressure fuel pump the FX 150 uh, known to flow about like 50% more fuel so I mean that's what I think under the hood it doesn't really look this is like the business end believe it or not uh, a lot of money has gone into uh, keeping this thing alive and getting it to what it is now but uh, you can't see the tune because the tune is digital so yeah it has a big boost custom tune on it right now a lot of things are going to change but steps have to be taken in order. Currently, at the moment, I'm pushing a shit ton of power. Don't know how much it is, but I definitely can feel the boost. However, it has a manifold leak. So yeah, going straight to the back. It has a OEM drive shaft finish. I snapped the old one. Uh, that's kind of why I don't do digs as much anymore. I used to do, I used to launch the car a lot, but once I snapped that drive shaft, that sucker cost me about $1,200. I stopped launching the car. Now I'm making more power, got stickier tire and a limited slip diff on there and I think it'll hook even better. That's why I'm even more scared to launch the car because I don't want to twist it again. Yeah, so that seems to be on the list. Uh, my most important thing is dyno. I want to get the car dialed in. I was thinking about running uh, low pressure fuel pumps and things of that nature. I'll make separate videos on why I do certain things, but just to, I guess, touch base on the last question. The last question, it was a funny, it was a comment. This is mainly what triggered me to make this whole video. Uh, am I keeping a car or am I not keeping a car? I'm gonna keep this car until it blows up, falls apart, somebody come takes it. Any, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the car until something happens to it to why I can't keep it. I put a lot of money in this car, uh, paid a lot into this car just as far as like payment wise. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the car. I love it. Uh, it's like I said, it's not my dream car, but it's something I can see myself keeping whenever I wanna get out and have fun and just beat stuff up. I'll take this car. I think somebody commented is just like oh he's gonna in five years from now he's gonna go ahead and post his car for sale saying barely beaten or barely abused or babied or whatever he gonna get 23 he gonna ask for 23 grand now that comment that triggered me a lot of comments don't trigger me but that it was the I think I've ever heard in my life one this car in tip-top stock shape with as many miles I have on it now you can't even get nowhere near $23,000 like Four, I probably get like 18 on a good day or like 15 16 on a on like an okay day right so with that being said that was just dumb but just two I think a lot of people get a little confused as to how cars buying used cars and stuff works you know just because you go to the dealership and the guy tells you oh yeah this car is in mint condition you look at the car facts everything seems to line up does not mean that that car has been dogged out like like no man's business, right? I pay for this car, I'm gonna do what I want with this car. I wanna do donuts until the thing blows up. That's just what I'm gonna do. At the end of the day, you don't know what goes on to these cars. The only reason that you know what happened to my car is because I put it online for you to see. You don't know what you're buying. You buy a used car, you could be buying anything. A PPI would be nice, you know, Carfax would be nice, but you don't really know what's been done to the car. The only reason you know is because what I show you, right? So what I'm saying is, in all reality, this would be, maybe not the best car you could buy, but this would be the most informed decision of a car that you could make, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't need to walk around and inspect and check certain things. I pretty much filmed everything that got destroyed, everything that I did to the car. You know, you don't really need a PPI. You can just tell that I went really fast and screwed some stuff up. I hope I'm making sense. But yeah, so at the end of the day, I want to thank you guys. Thank you guys for taking the time out to watch all my videos. Uh, keep subscribing. I want to get to 5,000. I want to grow more. Mike from Soul Speed, I'm going to be out of here.